The observatory was inaugurated in 1929. It was as a result of a donation of uh, Professor Wilson, a member of the Royal Society. He was an astronomer. And his son, after the death of his father, donated his large telescope. And then in 1927, the University of London, which was where UCL was part of, built the main building, which is uh, the central one of, of this site, uh, where they house this telescope. The telescope that you see behind me, which is the, the Fry, was donated the, the following year after inauguration 1930 by a wealthy uh, amateur uh, astronomer, which was Mr. Fry. And then things uh, picked up pace. We the University of London received a telescope, which is the Radcliffe in the other building in, in the late 30s. A new building was added, some more telescopes arrived, new equipment new facilities, and 90 years later from its inauguration, you have the facilities that you see here today. Well, UCL Observatory is, a, is primarily a training ground for our students. This is a facility to provide an education in practical astronomy for our undergraduates. This has been its, its origins, effectively, and its evolution has always been aligned to, this, to maintain and provide our students with key techniques, techniques that are relevant in modern astrophysics. So I think it's really important for our students to have a sense of, of ownership of an environment where they feel that they have access to facilities such as we have. And so, of course, for many decades we have been here, apart from a research function, a very strong component has always been a teaching function. And so our students come here and have direct access to actually some of the best equipped facilities in the UK. The Perrin telescope has, is a major advancement in what we can provide to our students now, I think. We were at a situation where we, we needed to move forward, if you like, in terms of the controls, the, the systems behind them. You can see the telescopes being automated and driven and tracking. All these facilities required an overhauler and it required a decision at some point to sort of invest in a major new facility to, have, to maintain the premier teaching observatory that this is. So I think it represents a major advancement in that sense, a chance for us to be more ambitious in what we can do. Um, and in that sense, again, continue to inspire our undergraduates, to inspire our students. One of the things that we plan to do with the new telescope is to be able to monitor near-Earth asteroids. And there are a variety of campaigns there's the uh, Planetary Defense Network, there's the uh, Institute of Astronomy Awareness for uh, Near-Earth Asteroids, which try and monitor as much as they can these objects. So that's a field which is not a new field of research necessarily, but is a field which is always current and always requires more observables. The new Perrin Telescope is the culmination of ambitions, I think, that we've had for some time to always upgrade our capabilities. So it's, it's a larger aperture, so the mirror is 80 centimeters across, which means we can collect more light. And by collecting more light, more photons of light, effectively it means you can interrogate that light more assiduously, more carefully, to try and achieve more precise scientific results. And over the next year, we expect to be installing a spectrograph on the telescope as well, which will mean we're able then to look at the spectrum of light coming from whether it's stars, galaxies, or gas, around stars or galaxies, and that gives us really important physical information such as temperature or pressure or velocity. We're able to see things moving by looking at the spectrum and looking how the spectrum is affected by the physical conditions in the object itself. We will have a facility here that will be able to provide some amazing new skills for our students and I think that's what's very very important for us. Ultimately that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to develop the next generation of scientists.